Coffee on a Tuesday in Vlog 21. So I had this thing about bookstores. Whenever I walk by them, it's sort of like, you know how in Vegas they, they pump scented air through the casinos to make the gamblers feel good? Well, whenever I walk by a bookstore, I, I get the smell of books in my face and I just have to go in and I could spend all day in there. The reason I usually leave is because I start to get lightheaded and realize that I've missed lunch and it's coming up on dinner and people are expecting me and I have to do this thing and write that email and, and move on with my day. And maybe it's not smart for one to analyze the charm of bookstores, but well, I've already sort of started it. And anyway, I read this article in the Times yesterday and, and it's got me thinking about it. See, the article said that Barnes & Noble um, has predicted that in the coming year it will lose more money than even Wall Street had predicted it would. And this after the bankruptcy and dissolution of Borders, its main competitor, is the specter of ebooks uh, with Amazon and its Kindle as a dominant force threatens to diminish this, this last chain of booksellers. And if they do, you might be left buying your, your best sellers at places like Target or Walmart. And it's ironic because it was Barnes & Noble which drove so many independent booksellers to bankruptcy, sort of like what Tom Hanks does to Meg Ryan in You've Got Mail with his theme park multi-level homogenize the world Mochaccino Land. Now Mochaccino Land might be the last best hope for print books and publishers like Penguin and Random House and Simon and & Schuster who use that, that front of the store display table to premiere new talent, to push the next big thing, a table which is especially important for new writers like me. Now to fight off the Kindle, Barnes & Noble has the nook, and it has boosted some revenue to the company, though it's hard to fight off both Amazon and Apple at the same time. David had enough trouble fighting just the one Goliath. William Lynch, the new CEO of Barnes & Noble, has done everything he possibly can to stay relevant and ahead of the curve, but his company is worth this much, while Amazon's is worth this much. And I guess we'll see how it plays out. But I pause to wonder if there is something lost by the digitizing of books in the possible end of bookstores. It's safe to say that someone reading a book on their Kindle or their Nook is having an experience which is negligibly different from reading a paper book. The story is still there. The words arranged as they are still produce the same magic, the same music of mental images that only prose can make. That won't be lost. I guess what I fear is not the death of stories, but rather the end of the physical space which those stories take up. Walking through the stacks and shelves of a bookstore, all our past and present knowledge looms, casts shadows on you, and maybe you get more accurate a sense with all that papered space of the distance we've come as a thinking race. It's like a real, living, interactive timeline, and it's not the same with a selection of ebooks on your iPad. It's no space there, just scrolling. You can't see each and every page tight against the next, and you can't see the overstock, or the display table, or the books people have taken out of their shelves but decided not to buy. There's a, there's a million variables in a bookstore, variables stretched over space and time, and it's true that sometimes a book like a magic ring can find you. And maybe there's an alchemy in that which would be a shame to lose. Or maybe I'm just being sentimental. Fräulein Werner, die Amerikaner ist hier, um sie zu sehen. Danke.